In the early 2000s, Nokia Symbian operating system was the dominant force in the mobile phone industry. It was used on more than half of all smartphones worldwide, and Nokia was the largest smartphone manufacturer. However, in the end of the decade, Symbian had lost its market share to newcomers like iOS and Android. And in this video, we will explore the reason why Symbian fell from grace and why it couldn't compete with iOS and Android. Before we continue, please consider subscribing to this channel to get more insight, information, and review about tech stuff. I'm Fatoni Asahari, this is Tresnology. Symbian was created in 1998 as a joint venture between Nokia, Ericsson, Motorola, and Pison. It was designed to be a platform for mobile devices, specifically smartphones, and it quickly gained popularity, with Nokia leading as the top smartphone manufacturer. The most prominent version of Symbian is S63 edition which launched in 26 and become the most popular OS on mobile phones, and successor Symbian S65 edition with more advanced features and new interface, but finally, it is not enough. Even though Symbian was popular in intake the market, the competitor Android and iOS try to disrupt with their innovation. Symbian is not enough fast to respond to the change and which ultimately led to its downfall. One of the main problems Symbian was a cloud system that was difficult for developers to work with. According to Silicon.uk, the Symbian OS written in C++, it was hugely complex with unfriendly code structure. And it typically took Nokia 22 months of development to enable it for a typical Symbian handset. Furthermore, Nokia became the only company that developed Symbian OS before it was released and became open source in 28. But it was not interesting for other companies to join the developed Symbian. In addition, Symbian had many different versions, and each version had its unique features and capabilities. This made it difficult for developers to create apps that would work seamlessly across all devices running Symbian. Unlike iOS and Android, which had thriving developer communities creating apps and updates, Symbian development was largely controlled by Nokia itself. This meant that updates and new features were slow to be released. Another issue was the lack of user experience. Different phone manufacturers implemented their user experience on top of Symbian, which led to inconsistent user experience across different devices. This made it challenging for users to switch between different brands of phones and have a consistent experience. While Symbian struggled with its issues, the new operating system emerged and quickly gained popularity. iOS and Android Apple launched the iPhone in 27, which came with iOS operating system, while Android was launched in 28 by Google. Both operating systems were built on a more open architecture and were easier for developers to work with which allow for a wide range of apps to be developed. iOS and Android apps developed quickly, and iOS and Android applications are growing very rapidly. Anyone can make an application and offer it through the application store. It makes Android and iOS users more appealing to move. They still Nokia and RIM users, because at that time, BlackBerry also going to fall. Even though Nokia doing the same, releasing Symbian into open source, again, it is not interesting to other companies. Nokia just keeps developing Symbian, while other companies like Samsung, Sony Ericsson, HTC, and ZTE rapidly move to make Android smartphones. And Nokia ended up locked in a death battle with Apple and Android, and it was losing badly. In addition to being more developer-friendly, iOS and Android were also designed with a focus on user experience. They provided a more intuitive and consistent interface across different devices which made them easier for users to use and understand. These features combined with their better performance and more extensive app ecosystem made them popular choices for smartphone users. While it did not happen to Nokia at the time, one of the biggest mistakes Nokia made was sticking Symbian for too long. Nokia continued to releasing device running on Symbian while other manufacturers were switching to iOS and Android, which contributed to Nokia losing its market share. Many Nokia fans want to Nokia join adopting Android in the new smartphone, but Nokia decided not to utilize Android because of some reason, and Nokia seems confident with the new Symbian V3 included Symbian Ana and Billy, the new Symbian OS designed to compete with Android and iPhone. Several models that use Symbian V3 
are Nokia N8, Nokia C7, and Nokia X7. Meanwhile, Symbian Anna more advanced devices like Nokia 600 series and Nokia 700 series. But again, Nokia's effort to ramp up market share ended up. Android and iOS have two strong positions in the market. In 2010, Nokia made a fateful decision to partner with Microsoft and adopt the Windows Phone operating system. The partnership was intended to provide Nokia with a competitive advantage of its rivals, but it ultimately failed to gain traction in the market. The Windows Phone platform was struggling to gain market share against the dominant iOS and Android platforms, and Nokia was unable to attract developers to create apps for the platform. And finally, the collaboration between Nokia and Microsoft to make the Windows Phone marks the end of the Symbian OS era. Nokia is indeed a giant technology company with so many hardware, advantages, patents, and high build quality. But system operation, user experience, and developer participation became more important. If you like, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and give thumbs up like. And see you in the following video.